sisters, it is no secret that many of us are not dealing too well with the current pandemic that we're going through. It is no short, nothing short of amazing that many of us have still made it during the situation and the circumstances that we're facing. Many of us who thought that we were going to go crazy have actually seen the blessings and the favor of God 
even in the midst of the world going haywire. It is no secret that some of us should have lost things, but God still somehow made a way out of no way. Here in this particular chapter, it is no stranger of a secret that everybody in this text lost something, but yet God gave them back what they lost. Here in the first text, in the first story, the first parable, there's a shepherd who lost his sheep and he left the 99 in order to go get the one that was lost. But notice what the text says, not only did he leave the 99, but when he went and found the one, he put the one on his shoulder and then he carried the one back to the pasture with the 99, called his friends and threw himself a party. The second story was about the woman who lost her coin. She couldn't find it, but she realized that if she turned on her light and she sweep her house, then she would find what she was looking for. Now, if I could pause parenthetically right there to tell you that before you go and wallow in your situation, sometimes all you got to do is turn on your own light and then start sweeping around your own front door. We're too busy focused on other people's front door. We're too busy focused on other people's houses that we forget that we are to sweep around our own front door. In our reality, we can't spend time worried about what somebody else is doing when in reality we need to worry about what's going on in our own house. This woman did not go out and look in the city for which she had lost, but she realized that what I need is right where I am. Let me pause parenthetically to somebody. You're trying to search all over for something, but God told me to tell you this morning that what you're looking for, you already have it inside of you. You just need to learn how to turn on your own light and look in your own house. What are you talking about, preacher? I'm talking about not your physical house, but I'm talking about the simple fact of the matter that everything that you're looking for, God has already positioned it inside of you. And because you are the temple and God resides in the temple, then therefore, whatever you need, all you got to do is look inside of you. I dare somebody to make up in your mind. I'm not looking for peace nowhere else when I can find peace inside of me. I'm not looking for happiness nowhere else when I can look for happiness inside of me. I'm not looking for joy nowhere else when I know that I can look inside of me and find joy. Because the joy that I do have, I'm, I'm aware that the world didn't give it to me and the world can't take it away. So why would I look in the world for something that the world can't give me in the first place? But I got to look inside of me because as long as God resides in me, everything that I need is already there. The Bible says that she turned on the light and if I'm not mistaken, I believe somewhere in the New Testament uh, uh, the gospel according to St. Matthew the Bible says let your light so shine. It don't say let your neighbor's light. It don't say let your friend's light. It don't say let your family light. But God said I've given you a light and as long as you got a light baby you ought to turn your light on and let that thing shine. You ain't got no small wattage but God said I've given you a flood light and all you got to do is turn it on and you can flood every bad situation. You can flood every bad predicament, you can flood every bad pandemic, because the light that I gave you, can't nobody dim it, cause it's gonna shine like nobody else's, the Bible says that she turned on her light and she swept her house and when she swept her house she sought diligently until she found it can I submit to you this morning that the real reason we don't find stuff, is cause we don't search diligently uh, we we, we want to find it as soon as we turn the light on. But some every now and then, when God has you on a finding assignment, it ain't going to come to you easily. Some things you got to move some furniture in order to find. Some things you got to move some people in order to find. Some things you got to move yourself out of the way in order to find. Because God wants you to understand that even though I got it for you, there's some things I can't give you on a silver platter because you'll think you got it on your own. But I need somebody to understand that every now and again, I got to search for what God wants me to have. That's why the Bible says, and you shall seek me and find me when you search for me with all of your heart. Oh, I believe that we got, so we got some heart problems today because some people don't want to put their heart into it. 
I, I put my heart into finding my booth. I put my heart into finding my new job. I put my heart into finishing my degree. I put my heart into everything that I want to do. But when it comes time for me to do something that God wants me to do, I don't want to put no effort into it because God already oh, oh, hold on before you get too happy because I don't want to put too much into it. Because of the fact that the Bible told me that the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof and they that dwell therein. So sometimes I think God owes me something when in all actuality I have to get up and go work for what I want from God. That's why he said faith without works is dead. Because if you're not willing to search, if you're not willing to seek, if you're not willing to find, if you're not willing to ask, then you can't expect God to do it for you. He says she turned off, turned on her light. And she swept her house. Now, I need y'all to understand something. You don't sweep a floor that's clean. And if you do, I need you after service to tell me why. You're sweeping something that's already clean. She swept the floor. Because there must have been some mention. That there was some stuff on the floor that didn't belong. Or maybe could it have been not that it didn't belong, but there was some stuff on the floor that would have blocked her view of finding what she was looking for. Oh, I lost y'all right there. Let me let me let me come down your row a little, a little smoother. It ain't that your stuff is lost. It's just that you got too many distractions that's causing you to not be able to see with God, what God had already put in front of you. I believe that some of us in this in this atmosphere today, we're searching for stuff and God says it's right in front of you, but unless you move some stuff out of the way, you ain't gonna never find it. She understood that in order to find what I'm looking for, I got to move some stuff out of the way. I got to clean some stuff up because uh, in all actuality, what I'm looking for could be right in front of my face. But as long as I got all this other stuff around me, I'll never find what I'm looking for. Ah, so she swept and she swept and she diligently looked until she found what she was looking for. But here's where the text got exciting because I had to go back up and read the shepherd's parable again because the shepherd's parable said that when the shepherd but found the sheep. Uh, he went back and had a party. He went back and called his friends uh, and they became married. And then this woman who lost the coin, when she found the coin, she called her friends and she had a party because she found what she was looking for. She called her neighbors uh, and said rejoice with me because I found the peace that was lost here in the third parable. What we see is one that everybody preaches and everybody talks about, about the part of her son and how he wanted something uh, before it was time for him to get something uh, and he went to his father and said daddy give me my inheritance give me what belongs to me and if we really look at the history of what an inheritance is we understand that an inheritance typically traditionally does not come until somebody has passed away it does not come until you've called sister Melanie at the funeral home and told her that your, your, your loved one has passed on and they come get the body the inheritance does not come until after the funeral service and now you've sat down with the lawyer and they've read the real to tell you what was left to you but this son said, Daddy, you ain't dead yet, but I want what's mine. And the daddy, he, he died, divided up the inheritance and he gave it to one son and the other son stayed there. Y'all know the story. And the Bible says that this young man who took his inheritance, he went out and did all kinds of things. He had riotous living. He was fearless. He was at the casino. He couldn't wait till Rosie's opened back up. He was ready to go. He couldn't wait till Las Vegas opened up. He couldn't wait till Atlantic City opened up. He couldn't wait till little blue act opened up. He couldn't wait to Magic City. Oh, he wanted to live and do everything that the pandemic had stopped him from doing. Check this out. Ah, uh, he went out and did all this riotous living and the Bible declared that he lost everything that he had. Ah, uh, and then he found himself working for somebody and they had him feeding the swine and he said wait a minute I got to come to my senses I deserve better than this my daddy didn't birth me for this my daddy didn't want me to be in this situation if I had to stay with my daddy I wouldn't have to deal with what I'm dealing with now so he came to his senses and the Bible declares he went back home but he went back with 
with a different mindset. In other words, daddy, I'm not worthy enough to be your son, but I am worthy enough and I'm honorable enough and I'm humble enough to say put me as a servant because as long as I'm in your house, it don't matter what I'm classified as, as long as I'm with you. Can I pause parenthetically and tell you that you are not one for titles and positions in this season, but you are the one just to be seen in the house and in the presence of God. We got too many people who want a title. We got too many people who want a position. We got too many people who want status and who want to be a part of the clique. But in this season of my life, I can't afford to be a part of the clique when I'm trying to make it into heaven. I can't afford to be a part of your clique when I just need the Lord to come see about me. I can't afford to be a part of the in crowd when I'm too busy trying to fight the spirit that want me to be a part of the out crowd. I need God to be fine with just me being in his presence. Uh, the young man went back to his daddy and he told his daddy, daddy, just make me a servant. And his daddy said, wait a minute, you were not born to be my servant. You were born to be my son. Well, I got happy right there uh, because too many of us, we, we, we denounce the anointing and the, the, and the assurance and the position that rests upon our shoulders. Do you know who God made you to be? Uh, do you know that God said you were wonderfully and fearfully made? Uh, do you understand God told you you were the head and not the tail? Do you understand God told you you were above and not beneath? Do you know that God told you you were the lender and not the borrower? Do you know that God told you that he'll bless you in the city and he'll bless you in the field? Do you know who God called you to be? God said, wait a minute, I've called you to be greater than what you are. And in this season of your life, I'm not going to allow no Negro. I'm not going to allow no Negro to make you denounce who you are. But in this season, you shall walk in everything that I've called you to be in. You getting ready to walk in favor. You getting ready to walk in dominion. You can ready to rock in power. You can ready to rock in everything that I've called you to be in. This young man, he goes home and here's what happens. He's going home with the right mindset and I'm about done here. Check this out. He goes home with the right mindset and he goes home and his daddy sees him from afar off and his daddy runs to him, kisses him on the neck, hugs him and says, wait a minute, my son that was dead, yet shall he live. He, 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 he receives his son. And this is what he does, y'all. He gives his son a new ring. He gives his son a new robe. He gives his son some new flip-flops. And then he calls a party. And he calls for people to come and party with him. Because he understands that when God does something for you, it's better when you got somebody to rejoice with. And he calls them. But I need y'all to understand something real quick. Everybody ain't always going to be happy with your rejoicing. The son that stayed, the son that stayed said, wait a minute, I stayed here. But yet you're rejoicing over the one that left you. You're rejoicing over the one that took his inheritance. But guess what? I stayed here. And the daddy said, you know what? You did stay here. But that's why I can rejoice all the time that you've been with me. But your, son, your brother that was dead, he came on back home. And that's a reason to rejoice. So I came by New Destiny this morning to tell somebody up in this parking lot that in the season that you're going in, you ought to go ahead and shout down. You ain't got to wait for the battle to be over. But you can go ahead and shout now. Why can't you shout, y'all? You can shout because even though you thought you lost it, God's getting ready to bring it back to you. Even though you thought you weren't going to make it, God's getting ready to bring it back to you. You thought you were never going to make it, but God is still keeping you here. And I wonder if I got any witnesses who can show no testify in here that what I'm going through now, it ain't going to compare to the things God getting ready to do. I wonder if I got any witnesses who can show no Who can show not testify? 
But God is not a McDonald's drive through God is not Burger King when you can have it your way. Some things you got to work for. And I don't care who gets upset with this, I'm going to say it. We're living in the laziest generation of church folk. That's right, the bishop said it. We're living in the laziest generation. People don't want to work for nothing. But we want God to deliver everything. It don't work like that. God is tired of us coming to him when we need him. And not coming to him just to say thank you. If your prayer is always God I need, there's a disconnect somewhere between you and God. Today is a good day to make it right. The Bible says take no thought for tomorrow. For tomorrow will take care of itself. But you have to take thought for the day because you don't know if you're going to make it to tomorrow. I got to get right with him so that if he decides to call my name, I know my spot is secure. Is yours secure? Could you honestly say that if he was to crack the sky right now and the trumpet shall sound, that your spot was secure with the Lord? Don't think for a second that you've already arrived. We all fall short. From the pulpit to the street, we all make mistakes. And church folk have a history of making themselves look like they perfect. They cross every T and dot every I. That ain't me. I cross some I's and dot some T's. We say took some off too? My T's look like L's. My I's look like T's. What I realized, since Nadia, as I went to the eye doctor, not too long ago, and they put me in the chair in that dark room, and they said, read line number four. And I looked at the lady and said, you expect me to read that? She said to me, Mr. Hatchett, don't act like that today. I said, no, I'm serious. You expect me to read that? I can't. It was all blurry. So she put the little thing in front of my face with the different lenses that they could put in my glasses. And she said, what about now? I said, it's clearer, but I still can't see it. She kept going two or three times until I told her I could see it. It's not that we're looking at the wrong thing. It's just that we need to refocus the way we're looking. If you need prayer, the governor has lifted our restrictions to a certain degree. So I'm going to ask you to step out your car if you need prayer. If you know that you're struggling with your focus, and you can't shout now effectively because you got too much going on, then I ask you to step out your car. I need prayer. It's hard to hold on when your hands are so slippery. But I believe God. You know why I believe him? He ain't let me down yet. I'm sorry, let's take the yet off. He ain't let me down. Yet implies there's a possibility. But I let him down, but he still walks with me. He still talks with me. He still tells me I'm his own. Today my prayer is this. God will keep us covered even when we step out of his covering. My prayer is that God would show us favor 
even when we're favorless. My prayer is that this week would be a week of miracles, signs and wonders. What's a miracle to you is ordinary to God. The song said he can do what no other power can do. My prayer is that we would shift our focus from putting it in the hands of man to putting it in the hands of God. Think it not strange when unexpected checks show up. Think it not strange when people from your past show up. No, not just for bad reasons, but to make things right. Strange, I, I hear God go. When things that was prophesied to you, and you thought that they were a fake and a false prophet because it didn't come to pass, thinking that strange this week when it starts showing up. I've been playing in the stock market this week. Here's what I realized. It goes up and down. Some of us feel like we're on a roller coaster like that. But what I realized is when I closed out my account on Friday, I was in the negative right before the market closed. I shut down my phone because I was depressed. I didn't want to see no more of it. But as I was driving, something said, hit your app. I hit it and I had went from the negative to the positive. Because I took my sight off of stressing about it. And put my sight on the fact that God going to do what he want to do anyway. That's what God going to do this week. God going to do what he want to do this week. It's just up to you to receive it and walk in it. I feel like somebody gonna get a phone call this week. You've been waiting on one. And you ain't got it yet. I declare and decree your phone shall ring this week. Somebody been praying for a relationship this week. I decree and declare the turnaround is gonna happen this week. the Lord just tell me somebody got some money that's locked up and you can't touch it. He said he gonna unlock it this week. Come here first lady. I don't want you now. I just want you to hold my hand. My wife and I this week and we're about to pray. My wife and I this week we were on the road and she looked at me and I knew she was getting ready to say something because she paused and she said Bishop and I knew something was up <laughs> normally it's Bay. this time it was Bishop and I said oh Lord yes pastor since you won't call me Bishop she said I just want to say thank you she said, because nobody understands how you go before God for the people in your destiny. She said, and nobody will ever know the magnitude of what you do. She said, and sometimes you're going through and there's nobody you can call on. Because the shepherd can't vent to the sheep. And I told her, I said, mm, you feel that way? She said, yeah, you signed up for this. But you didn't sign up for all of this. She said, but I thank you. We've had a heavy week this week. The devil has attacked on every single angle. 
but if your leaders can still stand. I'm sure Pastor Preston can testify to that too. But if your leaders can stay, guess what? You can stay in too. We all in this thing together. Watch Bad Boys the other day. We ride together. That's right. Bad Boys for life. Or Bad People for life. New best day about to start sweeping. We're getting ready to pray. Most gracious and eternal Father, we thank you for what you've done. We thank you for what you're doing. We thank you for what you've got in store. Now, God, we pray. If there be any wicked way in us, lead us in the way of everlasting. Us light, let our light shine for the people that you have us in front of. Let us not dim our own light, but let us hold up our light so it can shine. Father, I pray now for doors to be opened, for chains to be loosed. I pray for the mental stability of your people. Help us, oh Father. Physical slavery is over, but mental slavery is very prevalent. So, Father, I pray in the name of Jesus that you would release the chains that hold our mind. Let us know that we can do all things through you who strengthen us. Father, we glorify you. God, as you've taught us to pray, our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us of our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is truly the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Can God forgive us of our sins? Forgive us of our trespasses. Forgive us of our instability. But help us to be more stable in you. We thank you. We praise you. And we'll shout now. For it's in the mighty, matchless, majestical, magnanimous name of Jesus the Christ that we do pray. And let those who believe that God can do it Shout with a loud amen. 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 And I want you to put your hands together and give the Lord some praise.